Welcome to the ultimate auto layout tutorial. I think a lot of people feel like this when they use auto layout for the first time, but it's not that scary, I promise. In the video, I'll walk through the basics along with some examples. Don't forget to check out the interactive Figma worksheet below after you finish the video. This is the textbook definition. It probably doesn't mean much to you, but I'm gonna read it out loud anyway. Auto layout is a property you can add to any frame that makes it easy to create flexible, horizontal, and vertical layouts. If you're familiar with CSS, it's basically like CSS Flexbox. The button at the top does not have auto layout and the button on the bottom does. When I change the text within the button on the top, you'll notice that the frame does not resize, submit a response. Whereas if I change the text down here, submit a response, you'll notice that the button grows in size according to what is within it. It also shrinks if I make the text shorter. Auto layout is great for creating things that resize according to different contexts. So if you look here, when I resize this frame, you'll notice that the text flexes to the width of the container, whereas the avatar here stays a fixed height and width. When I resize this a little smaller, you'll notice that my name and my username wrap to the next line. It's also really useful for lists of things. So if you look here, I can easily shift the items within the list like this, and I can also resize this and it will flex according to the container and I don't have to move anything around. Finally, the last example I'll show you is a global nav. So usually with global navs, you're going to have to make multiple variations of it. And with auto layout, it's really easy because you can easily adjust from a horizontal layout like this to a vertical layout like this. In a horizontal layout, you can also set a fixed width like this and adjust where the elements sit within that layout. So the big question is, how does it all work? At a high level, you select a frame, a group, or a selection. You press Shift A. Auto layout is added that way, and all the children within that selection will magically move depending on where they are. If your selection is already aligned vertically or horizontally, you probably won't see a visible shift. So let's look at an example. So here I have five different items. Three of these are shapes. One is a frame, one is a group. In the frame, you'll notice there are three different shapes here and a text item. In the group, you'll notice there's two shapes and a text as well. So when I add auto layout, the children within the frame and the group will not be affected. Only the top level elements will be affected. So I'm going to select these five items and you'll notice that these are the top level children here. When I do shift A, you'll notice that they align like this and all have equal spacing. When I open up the auto layout frame, you'll notice that these children here, again, are not affected. Only the top level children here are affected by the auto layout setting. Within auto layout, there are two types of settings. There are parent settings that affect all the children within, and then there are also children specific settings that only affect the specific item that you have selected. Don't worry about all these little details right now. I'm going to talk about each one in detail. First, we have the layout option, which determines how the children will sit in the layout. So first we have vertical, which means that the children will stack on top of each other. Second, we have horizontal, which means that they will sit next to each other. And then finally, we have wrap. This is really common if you have a bunch of tags and you want them to wrap depending on the width of the container like this. When you add auto layout to something, you'll notice that the frame changes in the layers panel depending on the type of layout it is. Here's a quick example. So I'm going to select these four squares and do shift A. You'll notice a new section appears here. So right now it is a horizontal layout but if I change it to vertical layout like this, you notice that they shift vertically. I can also change it to be wrap. Right now you can't see a difference, but if I set the width of the container, you'll notice that these squares start to wrap according to the size of my container. Next, you can set the sizing of each individual child within the parent group, and this controls how these items will flex when you grow or shrink the auto layout frame. Here's an example. So the pink square here is a fixed size and the purple rectangle here fills the container. We'll talk about hug in a second. So when I increase the size of the parent frame, you'll notice the purple fills the space remaining, whereas the pink square stays fixed. This yellow area also has auto layout attached to it. And you'll notice that when I change the number of elements inside, the container size shrinks or grows. And that is because this container's sizing is set to hug, so it will just hug the contents within. 
It's important to note that for these settings, they are all up here and they are also set separately, horizontally and vertically. And so if, for example, I wanted this pink square to stretch to fill the area vertically, I can change this from fixed to fill container and you notice that it stretches to fit that area. So now when I resize the container this way, you'll notice that the pink is going up and down and the purple is going left and right. Here's another example. So this black area is the auto layout group. And if I want to have the purple square stretch, I click on the purple square and I change the horizontal resizing to be fill container. And you'll notice it fills. So when I change the size of the box, the purple stretches. It's important to note that the parent frame also has resizing options as well, but when you click on the parent frame, there is no fill option because there is nothing to fill into. You can select between a fixed width, which it is right now, or hugged contents, which will hug the contents within the frame. So it will automatically shrink to fit the size of whatever is in the frame. Next, we have padding, which is a space between the children and the auto layout parent frame. Here are a couple examples of buttons. If you look at this button on the left, you'll notice that there's 24 pixels of left and right padding and 16 pixels of top and bottom padding. And this is all set with auto layout. I don't have to manually move the text around. The padding is automatically added on the sides. And it's cool because if I change the text within, the padding remains the same. Here's an example of padding around three different rectangles. And you'll notice here that if I add more rectangles here, the padding stays consistent around all the children. Next, you have spacing, which is adjusting the spacing between all the children in the auto layout frame. There are two types of spacing, fixed spacing and auto. Fixed means that you're setting a specific distance between every child within your auto layout group. And auto means that you want to calculate the distance in order for the items to be automatically separated evenly across the space that you have. So let's take a look at some examples. So right now, this is my auto layout group. Right now, the spacing is 32. I can also increase it to be more. You can also use negative spacing like this as well if you want things to overlap. If you want to change the spacing to be auto for all the elements, you click the drop down and hit auto. And if you resize the container, you'll notice that the items will stretch accordingly. It's important to remember that this is a parent level setting, so it affects all the children within. The last one is positioning. It determines where the children sit within the parent. So I've selected this auto layout group and you'll notice that currently the positioning is in the top left. So all the elements will move there. I can use these to adjust where the children sit within the auto layout frame. Notice that this only works if you have a larger frame than the contents within. If you set both the horizontal and the vertical resizing to be hug, nothing will happen because you won't be able to see a difference. This also works for auto as well. So if I set the spacing to be auto, you notice that I can also adjust the spacing like this. If you want to fix a position of one of the elements within your auto layout frame, you can also do that as well. This is a setting that's directly on a child element. So for example, if I click on child number one, I can press this button here, absolute position. And you'll notice that no matter where I drag it, oops, no matter where I drag it, it will not get affected by the auto layout settings. So take a look at this. I'm affecting child two and three, but child one stays put there. And that is really good for designing things with fixed elements within. Finally, I wanna conclude with a concrete example. One of the most powerful things about auto layout is that you can put multiple auto layout groups within each other to create really flexible layouts. One thing to note is that you should create a new auto layout frame every time you need to change the spacing between two plus elements or change the layout direction between two plus elements. Basically, anytime you want to change any of the parent level settings across two plus elements, you should put those in a new auto layout frame. Let's take a look at this for an example. This is a really common type of post style. So in this example, I can see three different groups. There is the main group here, uh, the stroke around it. So this is the main auto layout group. Then there is this here, which is the second auto layout group between these two items because they're going horizontally. And then finally, there is this vertical auto layout group here. For each of these, let's talk about which layout direction you're going to pick. So for one, you'll notice that it is this image plus box number two, and they are horizontally laid out. And so I'm gonna go ahead and label this as horizontal. For number two, you'll notice that it is stacking 
box number three with this text on top of each other. So this is a vertical layout. Finally, for number three, it is kind of horizontal, but I'm going to select wrap because I want the two elements to wrap on top of each other if the space is smaller. Okay, let's add auto layout to the different elements. So first, I'm going to select these two items, do shift A to create group number three. And we're going to want this to be a wrap layout. Wrap. Next, I'm going to select group number three and the text underneath. Do shift A to create two. And this one will be a vertical layout, which it already is. Great. Next, I'm going to select this image here and then this group number two here. Do shift A to create group number one. And this will be a horizontal layout. We're not quite done yet. You'll notice that if I drag this container, nothing really moves with it. And that's because we need to adjust the child resizing settings. So first I'm going to set this right side here, group number two, to be a fill container. This means that the right side will always fill to the container, but look, nothing is happening. And the reason is because I also have to set the children within the larger fill container to fill container as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and click this, hit fill container. I also have to click group number three and fill container as well. And you notice now it will work as expected. That's it for now. I hope this was helpful. I highly recommend checking out the practice worksheet so that you can put these principles into practice.